Here's one aircraft type that helps keep our modern world turning. The muscle of powered flight now in massive machines, cargo planes. Aircraft have been used for speedy deliveries since the very earliest days of aviation. But how did rickety old biplanes lead to the ultimate airlifter, a gigantic cargo plane that can carry 250 tons? These days, we're used to walking around supermarkets, picking up fruit and veg from all over the world. I've got mangoes from Mexico, bananas from the West Indies, and green beans from Kenya. And guess what? They all arrived here by plane. Shall I have one of these? No, I've got one, I think, at home in the fridge. Modern cargo planes bring us exotic produce from all around the world. But a hundred years ago, the weekly shop was less exciting. Life was tough, but one thing you could do was write and tell your Auntie Jane in Tibet how bad things were. And thanks to one man, there was a chance your letter would get there quickly. Claude Graham White, an entrepreneurial chap who became one of the first pilots to carry airmail. It was 1910, less than a decade after the Wright brothers' first flight, and forward-thinking Claude realized that people would pay to send their mail more quickly. Postcards were sixpence halfpenny, letters cost double. Little did Claude realize, but he created the first cargo plane. Not much of a cargo, it has to be said. His small biplane had just enough power to take his own weight and a few bags of mail. This is for Auntie Jane. There we go. Claude was on to something. If planes could be built with more power, people might pay to send anything. If it could get there quicker. Over the next 20 years, planes did indeed get more and more powerful, and air cargo really took off. The recently invented radial engine had increased the power-to-weight ratio of aircraft, enabling them to carry much greater loads. And by the 1930s, airmail services were flying all around the world. Then, in 1935, these engines and a host of other technical advances all came together on one plane. The Douglas DC-3. And although nobody knew it at the time, it would become a landmark in the history of aviation. This has to be one of my favourite aircraft of all time. Powerful, reliable, gorgeous to look at, a stunning piece of engineering and design that blew away every other aircraft of its era. The DC-3 is a legendary cargo plane, although it actually began its life carrying passengers. It was one of the world's first luxury airliners and could carry 21 people non-stop across America. Yes. Well worth the $288 return ticket price. But by 1939, the outbreak of war put pay to civilian airliners. But it wasn't the end of the story for the DC-3. The military had plans for it. They realized that if they turfed out the VIPs and ripped out the soft upholstery, they'd have two tons of lifting power. And so the Rolls-Royce of the air became a transport plane. In America, they called it the C-47 Skytrain, and in Britain, the Dakota. This is a takeoff roll. Oh, yes. 
thrill to be taking a flight in a Dakota, and this particular one is nowadays used as a radar plane. We're up! We're up! Wow! I've got to actually hear the engines for myself. That gorgeous sound is two 1,200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney Twin Wasp radial engines. Powerful, reliable, and giving a cruising speed of 160 miles an hour. I mean, this is just music. You do not need an in-flight stereo system when you've got these two. Absolutely brilliant. The DC-3's fantastic combination of power, speed and range made it incredibly useful during World War II. It transported troops, towed gliders, and in the D-Day landings, it was a parachute dropship. But the finest hour for the DC-3 came after the war. In 1948, Berlin was cut off from the West by the Soviets. The only way in was by air, so a massive aid operation was mounted to keep the city alive. Nearly 280,000 flights were made, many by DC-3s. What began as a posh airliner for VIPs ended up as a flying delivery wagon saving thousands of lives. But as a heavy lifter, its days were numbered. The 1950s saw the emergence of aircraft with greater range and a massive increase in lifting power. And that was thanks to a brand new technology. Turboprops. Don't be fooled by the propellers on the plane behind me. They're jet powered. And each one of those engines is nearly four times more powerful than a piston engine on a DC-3. Meet the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, the modern military equivalent of the DC-3. It's far larger though, and its massive engines give it the power to lift about 20 tons. This is a semi-naked Allison T-56 turboprop engine. Four of these are the power behind the Hercules. They have a much better power-to-weight ratio than older engines. Instead of pistons and cylinders, they use jet technology. A powerful air turbine that spins extremely quickly with hardly any moving parts. By combining advantages from jets and propellers, they make the Hercules really versatile. The Hercules first served in Vietnam, and it has been involved in every major conflict since. Amazingly, it's still in service today. The Hercules takes the go-anywhere, do-anything concept sky-high. And today we're going to prove it by delivering a Land Rover and trailer from A, REF Lynham, to B, the barracks at South Cerny in Gloucestershire in record time. Inside the aircraft, there's nearly 130 cubic meters of space, enough to take 92 troops or a variety of military vehicles. Packaged up inside a special transport frame is our Land Rover, ready for loading. And to shrink the delivery time, the Hercules has a great trick up its sleeve. The Land Rover's nearly loaded up now, and in a couple of hours' time, it's going to be unloaded. But the Hercules isn't going to land first. We're just going to chuck it out the back. Much easier. Yes, even when it's impossible to land, the Hercules can still deliver. With an airdrop. I'm in the cockpit of the Hercules. Yes! The Land Rover is locked down in the back there. We're about to fly to the DZ, the drop zone. It's about a 30 minute flight to South Cerny. Prepare for takeoff. That's got 670 ready for departure. 670 clear takeoff, set winds 300, 15 knots. Feel the raw power of those turboprops. Excellent. Well, 
that was just one of the most exciting moments, definitely, of my life. It really was. When we were taking off there, you could feel presumably crosswinds blowing us over to the left a little bit. Absolutely magnificent feeling. And seeing the ground move away from us and seeing the fields down there at the moment, absolutely spectacular. We're flying at 250 feet, a typical low-level tactical altitude for the Hercules. We're involved in some pretty tasty flying now, and uh, we're getting at some pretty sexy angles to the ground. Absolutely magnificent for a big old this one. Meanwhile, down on the ground, the Army Air Dispatch crew await their delivery. In just three minutes' time, a Land Rover will be plummeting towards their heads. But will it land in one piece? <laughs> 